G'day everybody, Luke Fitzpatrick here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I'm just out trying to secure some dinner for the family. Um, I've got a couple of flathead in the esky already, which I'll show you. And I'm just out now throwing a squid jig around, trying to jag, trying to jag a tiger squid or two. Uh, I'm just moving around the inside islands, uh, inshore islands close into Harvey Bay, uh, just casting along the still water. Um, but really, I want to I want to see them first, but I haven't seen any yet. So, having a bit of a cast around um, today. What I want to do is um, it's been almost a year. It'll it would have been a year in June um, that I've had this boat and this motor, uh, the one seven five G two. So, um, I want to do a bit of a review about the motor today as well as catch a tiger squid. Um, but I've been thinking long and hard about how to do this because pretty much the minute you say you're gonna review a product, people start asking a couple of things. They go, well, has this guy got a vested interest in the product? Um, in which case he's pretty much just gonna say he loves it. So I'll start from the outside, from the very, very front and tell you Yes, I have a vested interest in this motor. Um, the folks at Evinrood Australia were re really good to me when uh, I contacted them about putting a G2 on this boat. They gave me a really good price. Um, so up front, you know that. Um, you know I love their product. So this video is not about how much I love them and how much I depend on it and how much my family feels safer and all that sort of stuff. I'm not gonna do any of that marketing mumbo jumbo today um, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna stick to the two key points that i think actually differentiates the g2s from four strokes um, we're gonna have a quick talk about one of them and then i'm gonna actually show you the figures on the other because i've run the figures so g2 now i can already hear the four stroke crowd warming up um, because there seems to be a couple of key points which everybody talks about when it comes to marine outboards um, and they just fixate them on fixate on those points okay um, so I'll, I'll nail those ones really quickly let's talk about um, first thing that people will say about Evinrude is they'll say noise um, so I'll tell you without a word of a lie uh, G2s are noisier than four strokes. There is absolutely no doubt about that. If you park a four stroke next to a G2 at idle, um, you will notice the difference in, in noise with the G2 and the four stroke. Um, we're not talking that the G2 is blowing your eardrums out or anything, um, and that the four stroke is so quiet you can't hear it. We're not saying that. We're just saying that the G2 is a little bit noisier, not much, but it is noticeable. Um, and that they have a very unique sound. Uh, these motors are very throaty. They're very, um, very powerful motors and they've got a very distinct sound. So that's that one laid to bed rest. Uh, the next one they'll talk about is two stroke being dirty, smelly and exhaust. Well, the fact actually is that the G2s um, I think they have the best emissions rating. Uh, I'll have to check that, but I'm pretty sure they do. Um, and there's no smoke or anything like that or smell or anything out of these G2s. So that's a complete um, load of bollocks, that one. So don't even listen to that one. Um, next one they talk about is fuel efficiency. So they always want to compare fuel efficiency. It's all in all the marketing hype. Um, I honestly think there ain't too much difference between all the major brands of outboards and fuel efficiency. Um, and if there is a difference, you're talking, um, you know, you might gain 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 kilometers per litre or something. It's, it's really, um, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a deal breaker when it comes to searching for an outboard. Um, they're all very, very good. And, and the reason for that is they're all competing for your dollar. So market share is very, very tight. Uh, percentage wise they're trying to grab every piece of market share they can 
So the major brands, the big brands, they cannot afford to have a product that is so negatively, like negatively so different from their competitors. They just can't afford to do that. So they're all pretty, pretty much even, I reckon. Um, there'll be some that are slightly better than others and others, you know, all that sort of stuff. So they're all, fuel efficiency I don't think is a, um, they're all very, very good. Let's put it that way, all right? So you don't have to worry about that too much. Modern outboards are very, very good. Now, there is two distinct differences that I reckon really separate the, um, the G2s from their com competitors, and they'll have their own as well. So um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, power and torque is the first one. So there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that the G2 range of outboards are incredibly powerful. All right, um, I don't, I'm not across all the specs for the other outboards and things, but I have test driven a lot of boats and things with different outboards and stuff. And I can tell you firsthand, um, the G2s are incredibly powerful compared to the four strokes. The low end torque, hole shot, all that sort of stuff is really, really good. What does that actually mean though, practically? Okay, so we're gonna stick to facts. What does that actually mean? Well, what it means for me is, oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful big fish down here, a couple of big, beautiful. See, mate, this water is so crystal clear, it's ridiculous. What it means for me is, um, so this this hull, 175 G2 on the back, maximum speed at 5,800 RPM. I can get it to 86 kilometers per hour. So about 44 knots, okay, 45 knots, something like that. Um, I which is great, but I don't charge around at that speed all the time, obviously. Um, but where it's really, really good is with cruising speed. So I cruise on 3,700 RPM. The max RPM for that motor is 6,000. Um, we're not having much luck here with the squid. So 6,000 maximum RPM, I'm cruising on 3,700. So the motor's only, only slightly over 50% working. Um, and that in turn, gives me great fuel economy again. So I usually get, uh, I'll do both Nordic and kilometers. Um, I usually get about 2.3 to 2.5 kilometers per liter. All right, and I've got 150 liters under the floor in the tank, um, which for the nautically minded is somewhere between 1.1 and 1.3 nautical miles per liter. Um, and that cruising at 3,700 RPM is, it, depending on tide and wind and stuff, you sit somewhere between 50 and 60 k's an hour. So, um, so somewhere between 26 and 30 knots. Um, so that's that's where um, that power really comes in handy for us. So I can get up on the plane really quick. This boat, uh, fiberglass boat's quite heavy, um, but it's got a few sneaky tricks in the hull, which I'll tell you about in another video gets up on the plane really quick and once I'm up on the plane the motor doesn't have to work very hard um, and I get really good fuel efficiency because of that. That means that I've got a lot of power left in that motor so when the conditions get a bit rough, not like today, today is it's like a pond out here today, but when it gets a bit rough um, what it means is I've got a lot of, I've got a lot in there that I can give it. So if I get into some really swelly conditions and things, I can pull back and accelerate really, really quick and instant power. So that's why that power and torque is um, is good and why I like it. Um, we're gonna move over to Big Woody Island now. Uh, that's Big Woody Island. And I'm gonna move up the inside of Big Woody Island just doing the same thing. So I'll do that and then we'll come back and we'll run the figures. Okie dokie. So this is, uh, I'll quickly show you. I've already got a couple of flathead this morning. I did get some footage. I'll, I'll whack that up in the video as well. There's, there's dinner down there. Uh, one's 52, the other's 48. Not giants by any means, but dinner nonetheless. Fresh seafood. So love it. This is the noise of the G2, okay? We'll, um, we'll crank her over so you can... Uh, so you can listen to it and compare it, I guess. Okay. So, that's the noise, like, 
it's not that noisy so but you do notice it when you're next to a, a, a at the ramp when you're next to a four stroke you do notice that this it's just got that chug 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 like real throaty chug 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 sound um, which I kind of like so anyway each to their own this is the power this is what I really like uh, ready and go So, uh, as I said before, the motor comes up to its one year anniversary in June, um, which will be roughly when I hit 300 hours. So when I ran these figures last week, um, the figures there, okay, I did, t I'd, I'd done 253 hours on the motor so far, okay, and it's, uh, it's May now, I ran the figures at the end of April. I know it's May tomorrow, 1st of May tomorrow. So I ran the figures uh, last week. I reckon I'll be on um, 300 hours by the time I get to June, which is when you have to have your first major service with the G2, all right? The only thing you need to do, out of the box, no break-in period, uh, 100 hours, take it down to the boy, I take it down to uh, Maddie at Harvey Bay Marine Services. You take it to your local Evanrude dealer. Um, they drop the oil out of the leg and they look for any particles or discoloration or anything like that to see if everything's going okay. Um, and this one was fine. And they top it back up with oil and away you go. And that's all you do. So um, we'll talk about the cost associated with that. And then there's the 300 hour service and then that's it, okay? And this is really the big difference, okay, between, between the outboards. So you've got to weigh up uh, the advantages and disadvantages for yourself. Okay, so 250 hours. Um, according to my Hummingbird and the uh, onboard computer, I'd burnt 1,750 litres of fuel. Um, so you can work out 1,750 litres of fuel. Work that out on average of $1.45 a litre. Um, don't tell Jen what the answer to that is. Anyway, um, now on in the user manual and on the Evinrude website, they tell you that the motor uses a fuel to oil mixture of 50 to one. So 50 liters of fuel to one liter of oil. Now this is important because this is the big talking point that, and I already know it, all the armchair four strokers are sitting there right now, warming up going, yes, but you've got to purchase oil. Well, we're gonna break it down, okay? So at 50 to one mix for 1,750 liters of oil, so 1,750 divided by 50, should be 35 liters of oil. Now I pay um, $87.50 for five liters of oil. So I thought to myself, don't just rely on that calculation. Let's go back through the bank records and actually look at each time I've purchased and refilled my little container. I didn't bring my container with me, but I've got a little five liter container that I take down to Maddie and he fills it up for me, okay? So there was the initial fill of oil when I had the motor installed. It's got an eight litre reservoir. So they charged me for the oil then when they filled it up. And then since then, according to my records, um, I've gone down there five times and filled up my five litre jerry and topped up the, uh, the G2. And that's cost me $87.50 every time I've done that. Okay. Uh, and then at the 100 hour service, the 100 hour service cost me $119 uh, and most of that was for oil, $87.50 for oil, okay? So, uh, five, six, seven, okay, seven and a bit um, times I've, I've done the oil thing, comes up, I calculated at $612.50 in oil in the last 250 hours on that motor, okay? So, so that's it, that's, that's the cost of the oil over the year. Um, when I get to 300 hours, um, the oil at the moment is pretty much near the top. I don't think I'll have to top it up again until it goes to the service, and then the boys will undoubtedly top it up at the major service. Um, so there might have to be another three, three litres, four litres of oil in there. Um, so there will be the cost of the major service. Now, I don't know what the cost of the major service is. Somebody out there might be able to give me a ballpark figure. Um, but from what I've read online and everything, I understand it to be about $650 or something like that, which I think is pretty comparable to the four-stroke services as well. So at 300 hours, 
um, I'll have to pay the 650 for the service. I've paid 612 for oil through the year. And uh, in that 100 hour service, there was the 87, let's make it 90 off of the 120. So it was 30 bucks in there. So what does that equal? <laughs> It's about $1,400, I think, something around there. Um, $1,400 is basically the cost associated with this motor for the first 300 hours, okay? And nothing's gone wrong with it. Thank God, touch wood, my head, okay? Something nice and hard. Um, that's, that's the facts, okay? Um, so when people carry on and say you have to buy oil all the time, you don't have to buy it all the time, okay? It uses it at a 50 to one ratio. Um, when you buy it, that's about the cost, and that's how much you'll probably spend in 300 hours. Now, um, I don't know what the servicing schedule or costs are associated with four strokes. I'm going to tell you what I've been told, what I've heard on the rumor mill, is that you have to break the four stroke in. I don't exactly know what that entails. Um, at 20 hours, you then have to have it serviced. I don't know if that's a major service or a minor service. And then at every 100 hours, you have to have it serviced. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if you go to 100 and then 300, I, I don't know. Um, but you can do your own calculations now. Um, if you know the servicing schedule and stuff, or you go onto their websites and you find out, you'll now be able to do uh, those calculations. Um, there's one other thing that I failed to mention on my list, uh, warranty period. Definitely check the different warranties that are on offer amongst the outboard, uh, the marine outboard brands. Um, Evinrude, every now and again, especially at the boat shows and stuff, they put a 10-year warranty on their product. Warranty speaks a lot about their confidence um, in the product, and uh, it helps a lot as well with any uh, maintenance mishaps and stuff you might have down the track. So definitely consider that as well when you're looking at your marine outboard. Um, like I said, I've not had an issue with this motor or the one I had previously, okay? Um, and I think their willingness to put such a big warranty on their motor is a testament to how bulletproof they actually think it is. So definitely take that into consideration as well. I didn't end up getting any Tiger Squid, so definitely send me a photo or a recipe to make me feel bad, uh, feel good, I mean. <laughs> um, but I got the flathead, so I'm happy with that. Back to the harbour, uh, clean some fish, and then uh, back into the homeschooling, I think. Uh, once again, take care, and I'll uh, talk to you later.